Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from my online training hub. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use the worksheet protection and workbook protection to allow people to interact with this dashboard by selecting periods in the slicer, but not actually delete anything or move anything around or make any changes to it. So first of all, let's just talk a little bit about workbook and worksheet protection. Now by default, every cell in your workbook is protected, as are all of the objects in your workbook. Now an object is something that hovers above your worksheet, like this chart, the slices, any shapes, pictures, clip art, that kind of thing. Anything that's not in the cell is an object. So they're all protected by default. Now protection only comes into effect when you protect the sheet or protect the workbook. So until you click on those and set your protection, they're not actually protected. So before you protect your worksheet, you want to unprotect the elements that you want people to be able to interact with. So if you want them to enter into a particular cell, then you can edit the formatting, control one to open the format cells dialog box. And then on the protection tab, you would uncheck locked. And that would allow the user to enter something into that particular cell. Now, while we're in here, I want to just mention briefly the hidden attribute. And by default, that's unchecked. If you were to check hidden, say we'd selected a cell down here with a formula in it, then the user might be able to select that cell, but it wouldn't show the actual formula in the formula bar. And that's all hidden does. Now, I'm not going to check that. I'm going to show you another way to achieve hidden without having to go and edit all of the cells. So. Before you protect your workbooks, unprotect those cells you want people to interact with and the elements. Now protection in elements is accessed slightly differently depending on the element. So for example, if I right click on the chart, I have to go in format chart area and then choose properties and I can uncheck locked. If I were to look at the slicer, then I can right click and I can go straight to size and properties, properties and uncheck locked. So for the most part, objects are fairly similar. Let's just insert a shape and I'll show you it's the same with the shape. Right click, size and properties, and then properties and locked. So just depending on the object, right click and look for the properties menu and you'll find the locked attribute. Now let's just look at the review tab and protect sheet. When I open that up, I've got an option to put a password in. And then I can choose what I will allow users of the worksheet to do. So I can check these options and you can have a look through yourself. There's lots of different options. If I uncheck select lock cells, then this is effectively the same as using the hidden attribute that we looked at in the format cells dialog box, because by not allowing users to select lock cells then they can't select any of these formulas and therefore they can't see anything in the formula bar. So that achieves the same result as the hidden attribute. And then we can allow them to select unlock cells. So they're effectively the ones you want them to edit so that you would generally have that checked. Now, I'm not going to turn my protection on yet. What I want to do is just have a quick look at the protect workbook. In here, we can protect the structure. Now that's things like adding new worksheets. The windows is preventing the user from resizing any windows. And again, we can set a password. So I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. So we've looked at worksheet protection, how to turn it off and on, how to set it for different cells and objects that you might have in your workbook. What I want to do is now use that to protect my dashboard. So I'm going to allow my users to select periods in the slicer, but I still want all of this data charts, pivot tables, etc. to update. So what I want to do is right click on my slicer, size and properties. Now I'm going to unprotect the slicer. I want them to interact with it, but I don't want them to move it or size it with cells. And I don't want them to be able to resize and move it with in regards to the position and layout. So now I've allowed my slicer to be interacted with, it's unlocked, I can go and protect my sheet and I'm going to uncheck select locked cells and that will just keep all of my formulas 
confidential as well. Click OK. So now I can't click on anything except my slicer. And you can see as I select any of the periods in my slicer, everything updates. So my slicer is still interacting with Excel and instructing it on what periods to filter my data for. Now, I've also got some other sheets in my file for my workings that feed my dashboard. If I want to protect those, then the first thing I would like to do is select them all. So click on the first one, hold down shift, select the last one. You can see they're all grouped. Now I can hide them. And then when I go up to the review tab and choose protect workbook, I'm not going to put a password in. If I right click, there's no unhide option available. So there you have some options on how to use the worksheet and workbook protection to allow your users to still interact with your reports, but not actually break them. Now, a word of warning, this protection is only designed to keep honest people honest. It's not going to prevent someone who really wants to get to your dashboard and your underlying data and all of your workings. It can't stop them. If they really want to do it, they'll find a way. They'll do some Google searches and they'll come up with an answer. There's plenty of programs out there that will crack Excel passwords and workbook protection. So it's really just designed to stop people accidentally messing up your reports and to guide them in to what parts of the workbook they can interact with and what parts they really shouldn't touch for their own good and yours. So use workbook protection by all means to help the users and yourself, but don't expect Excel to keep your really, really confidential data confidential. Okay, if you want to see a step-by-step -step instructions on workbook and worksheet protection, Click on the link here to go to my blog and you can see this tutorial all written out. And if you're not already on my weekly Excel newsletter, you can sign up here and receive more Excel tutorials just like this one, direct to your inbox. Okay, thanks for watching.